Welcome back to another video here on Whiplash TV. Today, I'm gonna cover something that we've all had to make a decision on, right? You're at the gas pump and you're looking at the gas prices and you're looking at the different octanes of gas. And you're fixing to fill up and you've at some point in time had to make a decision. What fuel should I put in my vehicle? Will it make a difference? Is one fuel better than another fuel? What does the octane rating actually even mean? Should I go with regular unleaded? Should I fill up with premium gas? Should I just put mid-grade in my car and just get something in between? Is higher octane fuel cleaner than lower octane fuel? There's a lot of myths and a lot of questions and different things about fuel and we're going to get into it. I'm gonna take a look at HP tuners and there's a lot of things that people don't know about. You have a high octane and a low octane timing table and things that are affected by what you choose at the gas pump. We're gonna take a look at all that and hopefully y'all find this interesting and learn something along the way too. Hopefully it'll be helpful. So first off, let's just get rid of this misinformation right off the bat. Just because you put in 93 or 92 or 91 octane gas does not necessarily mean that it is cleaner. Now, some places like the Shell gas station or even like Chevron and possibly some others, they will sometimes put a fuel cleaner additive in there that they claim will help keep your fuel injectors and your engine and everything cleaner. Now, how good of a job that does versus getting something else like a can of seafoam or the Lucas fuel injector cleaner or one of the other brands, that's up for a discussion on a whole nother topic. But in general, if the premium fuel does not have a special additive into it to try to help to keep your fuel injectors and your engine cleaner, then it's no better and cleaner for your car than regular 87 gas. The 87 octane gas is just as clean as the 93 or 92 gas, unless they have added a special additive into the premium gas. Mid-grade fuel is not cleaner than regular unleaded, unless again, they've added some sort of additive to it to help clean your engine and clean your fuel injectors, which I have yet to see at any gas station yet myself, where they've added a cleaner to the mid-grade fuel. So when you're staring at the gas pumps and you're looking at the different numbers of the octane rating, what does that mean? Well, 87 octane is going to be easier to ignite and create a flame and combust in your engine than 93 octane. 93 octane is going to be harder to ignite. And some of you may think, well, if it's harder to ignite, wouldn't that be bad? No, that's not necessarily bad because when something is harder to ignite and is less likely to pre-detonation and spark knock, then we want that fuel because we can advance the timing and make more horsepower and more torque. Now here is a huge thing that people don't know about and they don't know that exists on their car straight from the factory. In your tune on every GM vehicle, for sure, and many other vehicles such as Ford and Dodge and the like, most vehicles have in the stock tune a high octane timing table and a low octane timing table. There is different amounts of timing in these two tables and depending on what fuel you run will decide which timing table your vehicle is going to use and what power that you might make. So now real quick, we're gonna hop over to the HP tuners and we're gonna take a look at the high octane table and the low octane timing table and how much timing is actually inside your timing table. So to help make our decision on which fuel maybe we wanna run, let's dive into HP tuners and look at a factory tune and see what it might tell us about what will happen if we run high octane or low octane. So now let's dive into our spark tables. So 
This is a stock 2016 Chevy Z71 with a 5.3 V8 in it. And we're gonna take a look at some timing tables. So many people don't know about this. There is a high octane table and there's a low octane table. What fuel you run is going to determine which one of these tables that you are running in. So to get a good understanding as to how big of a difference it is, let's take a look. So here is a timing table for the low octane fuel that your vehicle is going to run on. Now, just to make a little bit of a heads and tails of what we're looking at, this top row axis is your RPM across the top. Over here on the left, is spark air mass grams. I'm gonna make sense of all this on this side to you real fast. 1.00 is just like atmospheric pressure. So on a naturally aspirated vehicle, if you are going wide open throttle, you will never see boost, which it would be below that. But you will most likely see between, at best, that 1.00 to about 0 0.80, somewhere in that general range is where you're gonna be wide open throttle. So your idling is gonna fall into play right here, what timing you get, and then if you were to mash it from a dead stop, you're idling at around 550, 525 RPMs. So you're gonna be going from here, you're gonna stomp on it from a dead stop and want some performance, it's gonna drop down to in here and shoot over, right across in here, right like that. This is your base starting table that you're gonna start with depending on what octane fuel you have. In this case, you have a lot of negative timing and in the main table, you don't get a positive one degree of timing during your wide open throttle pull in your base table until 5,600 RPM. The rest of the time during your wide open throttle pull is likely that it's starting with negative timing on these newer LT trucks. Now, let's take a look and see what timing you would get in the high octane table. Okay, so now in the high octane table, let's see. Again, if we're starting in this area and we do a wide open throttle pull, our cylinder air mass is going to come down in here and then our RPMs are going to take over and start climbing. So now let's look and see in this wide open throttle section, we're now getting one whole degree of timing at 1600 RPM. And as we go over to the right hand side, as our RPM climbs, two degrees, five degrees, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14. At 5,600 RPM, where on the other table, we finally got to one positive degree. We are now at 15 degrees here at the same 5,600 RPM. That's a 14 degrees of timing swing. And I promise you, if you are running low octane fuel and you go to premium fuel, you're gonna notice this extra spark advance. Now what I'm going to do is we are going to take a look at how big of a difference it is from the low octane to the high octane table. All right, so now for the sake of comparing Here's what I've done. I've taken the low octane table and copied and pasted it to the main tunes high octane table. And then I've opened up a compare file, which is in the background, which is the stock tune file that I was just showing you. So now we will go to this high octane table. As you can see, it's all in blue, but these numbers are all the same as those low octane numbers. So I've copied and pasted it just for us to compare. So when I go up here and change it, that's our high octane table. 
Remember where we were getting up to 15 degrees at 5,600 RPM. Okay, now we're gonna do a compare. This is how much timing you are down if you are in the low octane table versus the high octane table. And as you can see, we have a lot of negative 14 degrees at these RPMs. Up in here is gonna be like when you let off the gas and the RPMs are coming down, you'll have less spark air mass grams. So that up there, we're not as worried about. Even in here, it's gonna be a bit of your normal driving that you're gonna be doing around 2,000, 1,800, 1,600 RPM, just cruising, not being real hard on it, you're gonna be in this area. And as you can see, a lot of the table has 14 degrees of timing added to it just in the high octane table on a stock tune versus your low octane table. So it's a huge, huge difference. I hope you all found those timing tables really interesting. I hope that you learned something from that. And let me go ahead and explain that when you go to the gas pump and you put in 93 octane, just because you put in 93 octane does not mean that your vehicle is going to instantly convert over to the high octane timing table. It can take a matter of time for it to get over into that high octane timing table, anywhere from possibly a whole tank of gas to even possibly three tanks of gas, I've heard from different people and from doing different research. Also remember as well, some vehicles come from the factory with premium recommended. And if you don't run premium, you will not only be in the lower octane timing table, but your performance is going to be greatly reduced in vehicles that they really want you to run premium in. Always remember too, that there is a big benefit to more octane when you have a car that's boosted and supercharged or turbocharged, or if your vehicle has high compression. The higher the compression, the easier it is to have pre-detonation, and the more important it is for high octane. Also, if you have a high compression engine, either from the factory or if you've modified it and you've raised compression, then high octane fuel is definitely your friend and needed to stay safe. Also, if you buy mid-grade gas, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be stuck in the high octane table or the low octane timing table. Because another way that this works is that if your vehicle is actively or occasionally seeing spark knock, then it is going to revert back to the low octane timing table as a safety net. One other big thing that I always tell people, if you are going to go out and you're going to go the drag strip, if you're going to tow a heavy load or put your vehicle under heavy amounts of stress or are just looking for the most power that your vehicle can make, you want to run premium gas all the time or at least put that premium gas in your tank whenever you know that you're going to do one of those things. Please, before y'all get on out of here, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell. Please, if you've learned something, if you've enjoyed this video or just wanna help support the channel, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps and it's free to do and it goes a long way. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you learned something. Let me know what you think about the video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the next one.